Before we recognize the honorees of the awards previously mentioned tonight, I want to make presentations to three of our member institutions. The first award is the conference's All Sports Trophy, presented to the institution that accumulated the most points based on the final standings of each of the conference's 12 championship sports. This year's recipient finished in the top half of the conference standings in all 12 of those sports, including top two finishes in six of the 12. Their teams took home titles in men's and women's soccer, men's golf, and baseball, while finishing second in volleyball and men's basketball. This year's recipient retains the award for the 10th consecutive year and for the 14th time in the 16-year history of the award. I'd like to congratulate Webster University Gorlocks, and I would ask if representatives from Webster, President Beth Strobel, Assistant Provost Paul Carney, Interim Director of Athletics Mary Graff, and Faculty Athletic Representative Larry Baden, if they would please come forward to accept the trophy. Since the 2005-2006 academic year, the conference has awarded a sportsmanship award in each of the 12 championship sports. Each school that sponsors the sport votes for three institutions whose players, coaches, and fans they deem best exhibit the qualities of good sportsmanship. Four years ago, the conference sportsmanship award was created to recognize the institution whose athletics program as a whole demonstrated the ideal as a whole demonstrated the ideals of sportsmanship, and that was based on the results of each of the 12 team sportsmanship awards. This year's recipient won the Sportsmanship Awards in Men's and Women's Cross Country, Volleyball, Men's Tennis, and Softball, while finishing in the top three a total of seven times. It is the only school to appear on at least two team sportsmanship award ballots in every sport it was eligible. Cumulatively, their teams totaled 187 points in the team sportsmanship voting, nearly 50% of the possible points, and appeared on 62% of the ballots. The recipient of the SLIAC Sportsmanship Award for the second time in the awards history, Principia College Panthers. <laughs> President Jonathan Palmer, Senior Women Administrator Mar uh, Mary Ann Sprague, Faculty Athletic Representative Brian Roberts, and Sports Information Director Heather Fairbanks, please come forward to accept. Who's going to take a picture? <laughs> Our next award is being presented for the first time. It is the Student Athlete Advisory Council Community Service Award. One of the purposes of a campus, conference, and national SAC group is to give back to its community. Dating back to prior to my time with the SLIAC, the conference has attempted to find a service project that all, members in, all member institutions could partake in. Given the diversity of our conference, from size to location to beliefs, that task was harder than one might imagine. Finally, last year, the conference SAC group decided on a canned food drive. And given we are all athletic folks, we are naturally competitive in everything, SAC decided to turn the drive into a competition. Each institution selected one date on which it had a home soccer, volleyball, basketball, baseball, and softball game as a, as a collection day. A winner for each sports season was recognized, and the institution that collected the most cans throughout the academic year is presented with the SAC Community Service Award. During the course of this academic year, conference schools as a whole collected 4,237 total cans that were donated to food pantries within the communities of our institutions. Before recognizing the institution that takes home the award after collecting nearly 25% of that total, I'd like to recognize three other institutions that collected over 600 cans. Principia College on its three dates collected 616 cans. Greenville College collected 766 cans and Blackburn College collected 782. However, the winner of the inaugural SLIAC Student Athlete Advisory Council Community Service Award, collecting 1,076 cans, 
is McMurray College. With McMurray President Colleen Hester, Provost James Marshall, Director of Athletics Scott McClure, and Senior Women Administrator Danielle Dorfler, please come forward and accept this award. And that brings us to our individual honorees. The first individuals we will honor tonight are two recent graduates that have been selected as the, by the conference faculty athletic representatives as the recipients of the SLIAC Postgraduate Scholarship. These two individuals were selected based on their academic accomplishments, community and school service during their four years in college. To be eligible, the individual must have earned two varsity letters in a sport in which the conference sponsors a championship graduate with at least a 3.5 cumulative grade point average, and have plans to attend graduate school. The recipient of the male postgraduate scholarship graduated from McMurray College on May 3rd with a degree in biology and a 3.59 grade point average. He will attend graduate school at Washington University in St. Louis to earn a doctor in physical therapy degree. He was selected as his institution's Lincoln Laureate Award recipient an honor presented by the Lincoln Academy to one graduating senior from each four-year college or university in the state of Illinois to recognize overall excellence in curricular and extracurricular activities. On campus, he was an orientation leader, resident advisor, and member of the biology club, as well as a student worker in the athletics department. This past year, the institution had a new athletics director, senior woman administrator, sports information director, and several new coaches. I heard numerous times from the AD, he didn't know what the institution would have done without our honoree being in the department to help assist them. Athletically, he was a two-year captain of the baseball team and served one season as a student assistant coach, a role he took during his junior year so he could have more time to focus on his academic requirements. This year as a senior, he returned to the playing field and was selected by his coaching teammates as their representative on the SLIAC All Sportsmanship team. Please join me in congratulating the recipient of the 2014 SLIAC Male Postgraduate Scholarship, Derek Crouch. <laughs> Unfortunately, Derek is not able to be here with us this evening. He is actually in Africa with one of his science classes. To accept this award and speak on his behalf, please join me in welcoming with Murray College Director of Athletics, Scott McClure. First, like to um, recognize Leanne uh, for her receiving this award as well, and also for receiving a uh, NCAA Division III postgraduate scholarship. We are in the process of nominating Derek for that as well. My first year at McMurray College, and uh, we call for those of you that know Coach Creel, we call him sometimes Mr. Mac because he's larger than life. But if uh, He's larger than life, he's Mr. Mac. Sometimes I call Derek Crouch Mac Jr. because, as Will said, um, earlier in the meeting, I, I said we didn't really have a lot of student help with sports information, but we had Derek Crouch. Uh, I remember the first couple of times we'd have meetings, and I said, I said who's, who, who's gonna train the students to do the stats program? And they said, Derek Crouch. And then was the basketball, I said, who's gonna work the table? Derek Crouch. Um, Derek Crouch, when he wasn't playing basketball, when he wasn't a student ambassador for the admissions department, um, when he wasn't an outstanding student and an outstanding student athlete, um, he was doing everything else on behalf of McMurray College, and we're definitely going to miss him next year. Before leaving this past week for West Africa with a group of McMurray students and faculty, Derek sent me the following message. He said, please pass along my sincere gratitude to the SLIAC and the selection committee for choosing me for this scholarship. 
I really want to recognize and thank my instructors, coaches, and teammates at McMurray College. They challenged me and encouraged me, and they deserve a lot of the credit for both my personal growth and for this award. Thank you. Finally, this is my words. Derek has represented the NCAA Division III, the SIAC Conference, McMurray College, our athletic department, the baseball team, and his family with tremendous character, commitment, and respect. We will definitely miss Derek next year, but we wish him all the best at Washington University Medical School, where he will continue his career pursuit to become a physical therapist. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. The recipient of the female SLIAC Postgraduate Scholarship graduated from Westminster College on May 10th with a 4.0 grade point average as a biology and Exer exercise science double major. She has entered the Physician Assistant Program at Alderson Brodus University in West Virginia, where she will pursue a Master's in Medical Science. Athletically, she com completed a highly decorated basketball career that included three conference championships, two NCAA tournament appearances, and she graduates atop the school's all-time list for career points scored, career three-point field goals made, and three-point field goals made in a season. She was named all SLIAC three times, became the second SLIAC women's basketball player to earn Capital One Academic All-America honors this season, and was recently announced as one of 29 winter sport female student athletes from all three NCAA divisions to be awarded an NCAA postgraduate scholarship also just the second SLIAC women's basketball player to attain that honor. In addition to her accomplishments on the basketball court and in the classroom, she served as a student ambassador, a reading buddy at a local elementary school, a volunteer at the local Center Against Rape and Domestic Violence, volunteer with Special Olympics bowling activities and local youth basketball organizations, and she was a member of the Kappa Kappa Gamma sorority. Please join me in congratulating the recipient of the 2014 SLIAC Female Postgraduate Scholarship, Leanne Lutz. <laughs> Unfortunately, Leanne also could not be with us this evening as graduate school orientation has started in West Virginia. To accept her, her honor and speak on her behalf, please help me welcome Westminster College Director of Athletics, Matt Mitchell. actually had an exam today. Yes, she did. At day one. Yes. So welcome to the real world, Leanne. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm going to take a couple of brief seconds here to, and I don't know the rest of the schedule for the evening, um, but we've got, I want to take this opportunity to uh, thank Will uh, for absolutely everything that he's brought to our conference. Um, it, it, when, when Will was brought in as a full-time uh, conference commissioner, it was, it, it was needed. Uh, he seized that opportunity and, and took this conference to another level in many, many different ways. Uh, our, the, the, the NCAA's view of the, of the SLIAC has completely uh, changed under his direction. We're going to miss you, Will. We're happy for you, um, but we want to thank you very much. didn't get a chance to see Seth Johnson participate uh, in athletics uh, at our conference. I saw Christina and Brian, you were phenomenal, and you're well deserving of being here, and, and you should be very proud. Uh, Brian, I'm glad you graduated. I'm glad I don't have to deal with you anymore. I was glad the last time you beat us that I didn't have to deal with you anymore. Um, congratulations, well deserved. He was a great player and um, great representative of Fon Fon as well. Um, Leanne left me a couple things to talk about. I don't want to get into detail. 
Uh, Leanne is, is a super bright lady, and I asked her to give me some words. She sent me a, a two-page email. Uh, not going to get into the details. A couple of experiences she wanted me to point out. She went on a, a biology trip to Belize um, in the month of May. Um, I had a class that led up to that trip, um, learning about culture and, and, and things along those lines. She remembers that vividly, and it was a great experience for her. Uh, gross anatomy team. Um, I really don't know what that is. Gross anatomy. I wasn't smart enough to take it. I was smart enough not to take it. Um, she, six seniors were chosen to do a semester-long cadaver dissection. That's all I needed to go. That's as far as I got with the reading of that. Uh, obviously with her basketball career uh, and with, with Coach Braden and, and the ladies that they had playing at that time, it was a tremendous run, and um, it, it means a great deal to her and her experience as a Division III athlete. Uh, Leanne, when, when she was choosing her college, uh, was not thinking academics at all. She was a bright lady, uh, bright young lady. She was thinking basketball, and I think uh, she's the role model of a Division III experience in that she had a chance to develop emotionally and intellectually while continuing to play. Uh, and I think that's the biggest difference between Division Three and other levels, is you, you can continue to develop and, and gain new insights and, and learn new things. Briefly, my, uh, my favorite story of Leanne, and there's a lot of athletic people, there's a lot of coaches in this room that will understand this, Every freshman class that comes to our campuses, you have the gung-ho athlete that shows up as a freshman and they're uh, in the baseball batting cages every minute of their freshman year. They're in the gym. If they're volleyball, they're working on, you know, it's like, okay, they start college, now I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, continue to be the athlete. And what we see normally is that student, that, that uh, dedication, generally speaking, tends to wane as they pursue other things and get into other things. Leanne was that student athlete that came to the gym. First day I met her, she shot a thousand shots or whatever it was. She was tracking everything and, and keeping her stats. Three, four years, well, three and a half years later, she was doing the same thing. Uh, she was the, she's the most dedicated athlete that I've been involved with in my a lot of years of, of being in coaching and even as an athlete myself. She was a very dedicated athlete and yet she still had time to pursue those academic goals and, and her social life and she crammed a lot into each day. So we're very proud of her and, and, and thanks to everybody. Thank you, Matt. Leanne and Derek truly exemplify what NCAA Division III and the St. Louis Intercollegiate Athletic Conference are all about. They're both tremendous representatives of their respective alma maters, as well as the SLIAC. Scott and Matt, please be sure to extend the conference's congratulations and best wishes for future success to both Leanne and Derek. Our next honoree was selected by the Conference Awards Committee as the recipient of the fourth annual Lee McKinney Distinguished Service Award. This award was created during the 2009-2010 academic year to honor an individual or individuals associated with the conference for his or her contributions, accomplishments, service, and leadership to and within the conference, a member institution, the community, and Division III athletics. Their perseverance to excel in their sport or chosen field, their overall dedication and excellence in and out of the competitive forum, and their support for the purpose of the SLIAC and Division III. As the award was first presented in May 2010, the conference announced the Distinguished Service Award would be named in honor of its first recipient, longtime Fompon University Director of Athletics and Men's Basketball Coach Lee McKinney, who is a founding member of the conference. Tonight, we are very honored to have Coach McKinney's wife and his son, Denny. Thank you both for being here.
This year's recipient, like the award's namesake, has had a long affiliation with Fonbon University. He will retire next month after a 19-year association with the institution the SLI and the SLIAC and 47-year career in higher education. He brought a unique perspective to his role as a president, having been a former Division I student athlete, a former professional football player, a coach at both Division I and Division III institutions, and a senior student affairs officer at three schools. He has been recognized by the American Football Coaches Association and the College Football Hall of Fame as the Outstanding American, is a recipient of the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. State of Missouri Distinguished Education and Community Service Award, the Bobby E. Leach Award for Significant Contributions to Multicultural Relations, and the Norman A. Stack Community Relations Award presented by the St. Louis Jewish Community Relations Council. He served two years as chair of the SLIAC President's Council, and under his leadership, Fon Bon successfully became the first institution in the area to add men's and, women, men's and women's lacrosse programs and men's volleyball. He has consistently demonstrated a commitment to the student-athlete experience and support for the philosophy of Division III and the SLIAC, serving as a mentor and a role model, often being referred to as a student's president. <coughs> Please join me in congratulating the recipient of the 2014 Lee McKinney Distinguished Service Award, President of Fompon University, Dr. Dennis Golden. throughout the NCAA, as has been previously stated, has been nothing but outstanding. We wish you well in your new assignment. I kidded them earlier this evening. I said, if and when it becomes a commission on these big Division I things, remember who we are. You know? <laughs> okay. Uh, give him another round of applause. Uh, we have in the uh, audience this evening one institution I want to speak about for a moment because they are national champions uh, in, in a very unique uh, field of competition and arena. Webster University for the uh, national championship in chess. And you keep winning those all service awards, we're moving you to Division One. okay? <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Again. The truth of the matter is, when I arrived this evening, I had to step outside and just put a couple uh, thoughts together because in the transition that we're going through right now at Fontbon with um, welcoming our incoming president and um, going through all the processes and procedures of transition, there have been a lot of busy days recently, so just bear with me. Um, an initial thought, and this comes from the author George Weigel. Some of you may have heard of him. He wrote the, uh, the biography, which is titled Witness to Hope. It's about Pope John Paul II, now St. John Paul II. And one of the things that I remember from that biography was when the Holy Father said to uh, George, he said, uh, remember something, in matters of consequence and importance, there's no such thing as a mere coincidence. No such thing as a mere coincidence. And it's no mere coincidence that we are all here this evening. No mere coincidence that June and Dennis McKenney are here this evening. No mere coincidence that I am humbly the uh, recipient of this award. award. Two weeks ago, um, this Thursday evening, there was a gathering in the Ritz Carlton Hotel in uh, Clayton. And reference was made to a young 16-year-old student athlete in New York City, who was invited to go to the New York Athletic Club, something to do with the Lou Gehrig Award. 
And when that young boy arrived in the New York AC, he was startled to realize that he was the recipient of the Lou Gehrig Award. Those of you who know a little something about baseball realize that he gave his farewell speech in Yankee Stadium on July 4th, 1938. And when Lou gave that speech, he said to the people in Yankee Stadium, 60 plus thousand, I feel like the luckiest guy on the face of the earth, even though I'm fighting something that's incurable. And I think we are among the luckiest people on the face of the earth because we have the opportunity and the privilege to work with these young student athletes. That is a calling, it's a privilege, it's very, very special. In the art and science of trying to Presidents don't run universities, so I won't say run a university. I think we run around in universities. But my fellow presidents, please stand up because you know what I'm talking about. Come on, stand up. Thank you all for being here this evening, and thank you all for your colleagueship in, in the years that we've worked together. But on college campuses, I, I frequently have said there are two curriculums. There is the formal curriculum, the academic curriculum, which primarily comes from the faculty using their insight, using their commitment, almost their artistic awareness of what it means to, be, to create a curriculum for the greatest common good. And then there is the formative curriculum, or the out-of-class experiences, of which college athletics is a crucial part, of which many of us have had those experiences, for which we are very grateful, for which we will honor Hall of Fame recipients in a couple of moments, inductees. That's a very special type of thing. And it is the formative curriculum that brings us to this assembly this evening. When you think about what it means to really be a student athlete, what it means to pay the price of preparation, performance, analysis, commitment to do your very best, and then translate that into the academic realm, into the social realm, the interpersonal realm, those lessons learned by all of us at various times in our formative years are what carries us forward. The very first contest I ever saw at Fontbonne University was a basketball game coached by Lee McKinney. I was a brand new president. I'm embarrassed to tell you, I can't remember who the opponent was, but I will never forget the ending of the game. Um, they had a lot of turnovers and there was foul trouble and so forth. I don't think this young man at the time was a starter on the team. I think Lee inserted him into the game at a very crucial point with a few seconds left in the game. And the ball moved from player to player, and as the clock ran down, this young man tossed the ball in the air, won it at the buzzer, and the place went wild. I knew the young man because he was on the presidential search committee that brought me to Fontbonne College at the time. The young man's name is Kevin Walsh, and today he's the head coach at Vianney High School here in the city, and a great, great coach and a great competitor. After the game, I congratulated Kevin, and he said, Dr. Golden, thank you very much, but he said, I'm sure when you were in Louisville, you saw many more spectacular games than this. And I said, stop right there. I coached at Division I, I coached at Division Three, played at Division I and at other levels, I said, Kevin, what you did tonight is spectacular. And I said, it's incomparable to anything I saw anywhere else. And in Division Three, never take a second seat to Division Two or to Division One, because what we do in Division Three is really student athletic oriented. You read the papers today, you see all that's going on with the NCAA. They're trying to figure out how much money, how many meals, how many of this, how many of that. And what are we doing? We're with the formal curriculum and the formative curriculum, educating good kids to do good things. And that's what I think Division Three is really all about. In my closing comments, 
uh, let me say the following. If you ever saw the film, The Last Samurai, and at the very end, Tom Cruise comes limping up into the Great Hall, and the young emperor of Japan is standing there, and he looks at Cruise after the battles, and he said, tell me how he died. And Cruz looks at the emperor and says, no, I'm going to tell you how he lived. Loving his family, loving basketball, loving the institutions that he worked for. He had a great love of life, a great respect for those who he knew and admired, those he considered his friends, and I consider Lee a friend, a good friend. And he left his mark on Fontbonne College, Fontbonne University over a period of plus two decades. His wife, June, was there for every single game. His son, Dennis, who was here this evening, was on the bench many, many times. They viewed what happened at Fontbonne as a family matter. They viewed what happened at Fontbonne as a university and family matter. Lee, as you probably all know, had a tremendous battle with cancer. My wife, Monica, is an RN. She and Lee had a very close relationship. And I think if I had to sum it up, and I'd use the example from Westminster College, I think it was 1946, when the great statesman, Winston Churchill, walked to the podium and gave the Iron Curtain speech, one of the most profound speeches ever delivered American soil and was nine words in length. Never give up, never give up, never give up. Lee McKinney never gave up. I'm humbled and deeply appreciative to receive this award this evening. Thank you. The Slyak Hall of Fame inducted its first individual in 1992 and in the first class of student athletes in 2007. Induction into the Hall of Fame can come in one of four categories, student athlete, coach, institution administrator, staff member, or meritorious service contributor, or service overall to the conference. This evening, we will induct three new members into the Hall of Fame, bringing membership of that distinguished group to 42, including 33 student athletes, eight administrators, and one coach. To be eligible for enshrinement as a student athlete, the individual must have graduated from his or her institution, played at least two years at that institution, and played a sport in which the conference sponsors a championship. An individual is el becomes eligible five years following their last season of participation. To be eligible for enshrinement as a coach or administrator, an individual must have served his or her institution for at least five years and becomes eligible for induction three years after his or her date of service, final date of service. Our first inductee served as head coach of Principia College men's soccer team for 18 years, 11 of those who came as members of the SLIAC, and he served seven years as the institution's director of athletics. He is the first member of the SLIAC Hall of Fame to be inducted primarily for his accomplishments as a coach. His teams were routinely ranked within the region. He earned conference coach of the year honors three times and was once named central region coach of the year by the National Soccer Coaches Association of America. In his final season as coach, he led the team to a then SLIAC record 13 conference wins and became the first coach to lead a Principia team to the NCAA Division III National Tournament. 65 of his players earned all SLIAC honors and eight of those individuals earned NSCAA all region honors. Please join me in congratulating a 2012 inductee into the Principia College Hall of Fame and welcoming, welcoming to the SLIAC Hall of Fame as a member of the class of 2014, Seth Johnson.
great to be in St. Louis. I always like an excuse to come back to St. Louis. Uh, right now we're living in Portland, Maine. I've been there for 10 years. Um, I want to thank the conference. It's a real honor to be here and to be inducted into the Conference Hall of Fame. I want to thank Principia College. I had 18 wonderful years there. I uh, was able to start a family and do a lot of things other than coaching. But the coaching was a great part of it for sure. And it was uh, a great place for me to both combine my religious beliefs, as you know, and my love of sports. Um, I'd like to tell a couple quick stories if I could. I think I have five minutes, but I don't think there's a, a gong for me. So um, I was raised in a, in a family where my dad emphasized that athletics is about education. It's about character development. And this was coming from a gentleman who uh, was a professional athlete, was drafted out of high school as a baseball player, uh, played one year of minor league baseball, then enlisted in the Marine Corps in World War II, and uh, served for several years, came back out and played a few years of, of minor league baseball before he started his own business and, and went on his own to start a family. Uh, but he, he always emphasized that it's about athletic, athletics is about education. So there was no pressure. Uh, there was no pressure on us to necessarily reach the heights that he did as an athlete. Um, but I remember one thing in particular he taught me. Um, I remember one time I was complaining after a game. Uh, we had lost two to one. And I was complaining about my coach, the way my teammates were playing. And you know I was complaining about everything. And his, he was listening as always. He listened well. But his response to me was, Seth, if you had scored one more goal and had set up another teammate, you would have won 3-2, and we would not be having this conversation. <laughs> so I learned as a, at a young age that as an athlete, um, you were responsible for your performance. Um, you had the ability to control the outcome. And that um, that was the, one, of the, one of the things I was trying to instill in my players over the years as a coach. My second story is about my mom, um, uh, who raised seven children um, and uh, ran a camp up in, New, uh, up in Maine, Camp Newfound for girls for a number of years. But when I first came to Principia in 1984, uh, as the men's soccer coach, I was also the head baseball coach, but men's soccer was my main focus at the time. I had 14 players in preseason. I had been hired sort of late spring. There had been some changes in the, the setup at Principia. And uh, so I didn't really have any time to do any recruiting or anything. And I showed up at, with 14 players. And I was behind beside myself. I was, you know. So I, got, I pick up the phone after a few days and I call my mom, of course. You know. And um, I, I got on the phone and I said, I think I made a huge mistake. Um, we only have 14 kids here, you know. This really stinks. This really stinks. First words out of her mouth on the other end of the phone was, you stink. <laughs> Two words, you stink. You agreed to go there. You made the commitment to go there. You figured it out. Well, it turned out we had a goalie who had been at a wedding I didn't know about who came in and actually became an all-region player that year. Um, the, we actually had several good players in the freshman class. And we end up winning the, what was called the Prairie College Conference that first year. Um, so, but those are, those are examples of, of what kind of things were instilled in me and that as an educator, I was trying to eventually instill in my, uh, in my players. Um, and of course, we're, we're, we're coaching a sport, but we're really trying to develop character. We're really trying to develop the qualities in the individual that we want to see manifested so they can move on and do well in life. Um, so the number of wins isn't that, isn't that important, but the qualities that you're developing in the people. And how do you do that? Well, the way I try to do it is setting goals, specific goals, team goals, and then with each player, individual goals. Um, what are you trying to accomplish this season? Review those goals. Um, put together a very challenging schedule. I thought it was more important that our players be exposed to the best teams in the region um, than anything else. Um, so we weren't really trying to pad a schedule. 
uh, very demanding training, um, and I think Principia does a nice job with all the coaches and all the demanding training that, that goes on. And then the, the requirement of, on me, the demand of me, was to really know the game, to know how to teach the game, to know how to compete. Um, I think one of the, the things that I look back on my experience at Principia, and having had the upbringing I did, when I went to Principia, small, religiously affiliated school in the Midwest, I, I didn't see the limits. Sometimes we live within the limits that we sort of set for ourselves. Um, but because of some of the lessons I'd learned, I didn't see those limits. I wasn't thinking after my mom's you stink that <laughs> there was any, you know, there were any limits that, 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 that could be accomplished. Um, so instead of focusing at all on any limits, we focused on our goals. What are we trying to achieve? Uh, what are we trying to put forward? And, um, and I think during that time, we did some pretty good educating uh, of our student athletes. Um, a couple highlights, uh, making the NCAA tournament uh, was certainly a highlight. Um, uh, beating DePaul University in 2001 at DePaul uh, on a free kick by Kyle Webster. Um, and, uh, and the next year, 2002, beating Washington University at WashU uh, in overtime. Those are, are certainly highlights. And that was really in the back of my mind what we were striving for. We were striving, we played those guys a dozen times before we beat them. And so, you know, you could say, well, you beat them once. Yes, we did. Um, and and it, was, it was rewarding and it did meet, uh, meet some goals. Um, I think more than anything, I'm grateful to the players. And I do have two players that came tonight. Um, Kip Keller is an executive. I actually coach Kip in baseball. He's an executive with New Balance. Kim, thank you very much. And Travis Brandingham, who was a soccer captain of mine in the mid-90s. He, uh, he's now a principal of uh, Principia um, down in St. Louis, K-12. through um, Very grateful to my assistant coaches. Uh, one of the things, I, I didn't even really realize it, but in 18 years, I only had three assistant coaches, which I think is unusual for you know, us that are full-time coaches, and you, 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 know, you have a little money to shovel out to your assistant coach, but I had a, one or two people that came for a year or so, but, but Lee Barron was my assistant coach for several years, six or so years. Ricardo Boehner came in, um, and Vitalis Otieno, who was now the head coach at Principia. Um, they were all very instrumental. Uh, I, was, I was young, and at first when I came to Principia, I was single. So I had nothing to do but coach and bother these players. <laughs> so, you know, these guys were good helping, you know, shepherd me a little bit. You need to give them some space. You need to, um, you know, settle down a little bit. Uh, but I'm very grateful to the, the assistant coaches I have. They really were, really were helpful. Um, lastly, I want to thank my family, my wife Libby of 28 years. Uh, I was, uh, I was 28 at the time and I, I, uh, Proposed and she accepted, and then I think she thought, I'm going to the Midwest. Uh, she was, you know, she was from the Northeast. I had met her. We, were, we both went to Williams College, and uh, she was not in athletics at all. I played soccer and hockey at Williams. Um, but anyway, she joined me, and we were, lived in Alton, and uh, raised our two boys there. And then we had a third one late in the going, um, and Anna joined us in 2000. Um, so, Olivia can't, couldn't be here tonight, but um, not, none of this could happen without your, your support of your spouse. And your, you know, your, your, she understood me um, very well, probably much better than I understand her. Uh, but that's, that's part of the process as well. Uh, we, have, we have three kids. Caleb is a second lieutenant in the Marine Corps. And Gabe is a senior soccer player at Dartmouth College. And Anna is an eighth grader in, uh, in uh, where we live in Southern Maine. Uh, but all this is, is great. I'm grateful to be here. Uh, I'm grateful to be a part of the conference and Principia. Uh, grateful for all the players, assistant coaches. Uh, can't be more grateful for my family and, and all the, uh, the benefits we've had from, from, uh, from being a part of all this, being a part of all this family. So thank you very much.
As we now turn to induct two highly decorated student athletes, I've always taken great pleasure in standing before this group, reading off the accomplishments of our tremendous former student athletes as they're inducted into the Hall of Fame. Tonight is extra special because for the first time I'm able to highlight those accomplishments of two individuals that I had the great fortune to see play during their career. Our next inductee was a standout on the basketball court for Fompon University and is one of just three individuals to earn Conference Player of the Year honors twice. He finished his career fourth in all-time points scored by a SLIAC men's basketball player with 1,756 points, which rank him first all-time at Fompon, one of five school records that he holds. He was a three-time first-team all-conference selection and a member of the 2008 SLIAC all-tournament team. He led his team to three consecutive conference tournament titles and three straight trips to the NCAA Division III tournament, an accomplishment no other men's basketball program has ever reached in the conference. Please join me in congratulating a 2009 graduate of Fompon University and welcoming to the SLIAC Hall of Fame, Brian Fogarty. Thank you to Coach Mitchell for the nice words. Pleasure playing against you. First class team, still great friends with a lot of guys that played for you. So thank you for that. Um, secondly, Christina, very good player as well. Got to watch her beat up on Fon Fon quite a bit. So um, it's awesome to see her here as well. Uh, thirdly, Dr. Golden, great speech. Um, pleasure being in school with you all four years. Uh, thank you to the SLEAC for inducting me into the Hall of Fame. I had a great time, <laughs> learned a lot of lessons in school, as I'm sure some of you know, um, but got a lot of life lessons out of that, and that's what it's all about. Um, I'd like to say thank you to my mom and dad for helping me throughout the way. Uh, can't say enough about what they've done for me. Um, Mary, thanks for being there for me and uh, for re rebounding all those nights. It would have been half the player without you there. Um, the McKinney's, I can't say enough about you guys. You practically took me in, and uh, I just wish that uh, Lee was here to see it tonight. But he's not, um, kind of bouncing off what Dr. Golden said, the never give up, he, he never did, he never gave up on me, and uh, really helped to make me a, a better person. And uh, like I said, I just wish he could be here for this. But thank you to the SLEAC, and uh, thank you to everybody who helped me along the way. Thank you. Our final inductee into the Hall of Fame class of 2014 is one of the most decorated two sports student athletes in conference history, excelling on the volleyball and basketball court for Principia College. On the volleyball court, she is the, she is the only individual to earn Conference Player of the Year honors three times and is one of three players to earn COSIDA Academic All-America honors, the only one to achieve that as a first team selection. She was a four-time first team all-conference selection, led the nation in kills per set as a senior, and holds seven school records. Not to be outdone on the basketball court, she graduated as the conference's leader in career points scored by a women's basketball player and held that mark until this past February. She is one of four, she, she was a four-time basketball all-conference selection, player of the year as a senior, and holds five school records at Principia. Please join me in congratulating a 2009 graduate of Principia College and welcoming to the SLIAC Hall of Fame, Christina Spear.
There are so many fabulous memories, so many wonderful relationships, so many lessons, and so many blessings from that time, all of which continue to bless and enrich my life to this day. It would take ages to tell them all now, but there is one lesson that I'd like to share from my junior year basketball season. It continues to inspire me even now in my current career as a professional volleyball player. That particular season brought home to me the importance of motive and focus in all that we do. My focus that year, and since then, was to see the fun in the game, to play for the love of the game and for nothing else. The result was the most satisfying, satisfying season I've had up to that point. That's continued to be the case. When my focus is on loving the game and all the good that is taking place, that's when I'm the most satisfied. And I found that to be true in all areas of life, not just in sports. In my professional sports career, I've played with players from around the world, some of whom have played because it was the best job offer they had, or perhaps because it was more or less expected of them. But the ones who everyone wants to play with, the ones the fans love to see, the ones every coach wants on his team, are the ones who play because they love the game. That's one of the great things about Division Three sports. Practically everyone involved, be it the athletes, the coaches, the administrators, they're involved because they love the game and all that the game provides. Thank you all, to all of you here today, who love the game, whatever sport it may be, and who dedicate your time and your energy to supporting SLEAC and Division Three athletics thereby enabling so many student athletes to develop and express their love of the game and all the game has to give. Thank you for loving the game and for inspiring others, including me, to love the game as well. Thank you. For our newest members of the SLIAC Hall of Fame, your accomplishments on and off the court, or on and off the playing field, had already gone down among the best and greatest, most influential in conference history. And now, with your induction into the SLIAC Hall of Fame, your place among the conference's elite is cemented. Congratulations to each of you on this very much deserved honor. And that brings a close to the third annual St. Louis Intercollegiate Athletic Conference Awards Banquet. On behalf of everyone associated with the conference, I want to once again extend congratulations to Derek, Leanne, Dr. Golden, Seth, Brian, and Christina on all those well-deserved honors bestowed upon you.